Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for what has been an inspiring show. And we're about to level up probably to the highest level that you can achieve on the face of the planet. Having summited Everest before, adventurer and mountaineer Sibyl C. Silvalani, who started climbing mountains back in 1996, decided to take on the Tenzing and Edmund Hillary Everest Marathon. That is insane. Just to say it is insane. And that came, of course, uh, with great success here to share his stories and love for climbing mountains, the biggest in the world. Please welcome Sibyl Ciso Villani and his close friend, uh, and a friend, I think, to many of us on the set and partner in crime, celebrity businesswoman, Jerry Elston. Guys, <laughs> welcome to it. Um, it is with a great sense of relief that we welcome you to the studio because you, you are doing death-defying things. Um, oh, we love you. Fine. Just to put it in perspective, because I want to get into that, the mindset that you have right now. Mm. How l long ago were you on the mountain in this, this crazy place, Sue? Um, well, on the, towards the summit of Mount Everest, I was there last year, uh, having, uh, trying to go without oxygen to the summit. Don't ask me why, uh, but I did that. That's silly. And silly. Then, uh, then that's where, obviously, I made the decision that this year I will return and then run the marathon. But when I ran the marathon, it was just fulfilling a 16-year-old dream of mine because in 2003, when I summited the mountain for the first time, I was just sitting at base camp packing my bags and I was told there's, there are people, a bunch of people that are running a marathon from here down to 3,400 meters, which in South oh, African geez. terms, that is still higher than our Drakensberg mountain. You're yeah, running at that altitude. It's three times as high as Table Mountain, I think. Well, probably. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, say, I said to myself, if I return to climb, to, to be anywhere on the slopes of this mountain, it would be to run that marathon. Well, to, is it to say that I've been twice since then to try and climb the mountain, and then I had to decide. And you, and you were doing this a couple of days ago. You guys literally yeah. got back like yesterday, Jerry. Yeah. Yes. Um, first of all, I'm loving the shoes. Um, <laughs> absolutely, just give them their, their air time. You must be a breath of fresh air with lots of fresh air up you know, on oh the yeah. mountain. <laughs> Quite as literally. You, yeah. <laughs> as, as you go, you meet people from all over the world. And when I, when I first started, I said, and everybody said, you know, with your sense of fashion and your love for it, what are you going to do about, you know? And I said, well, you know, I think happy feet will do it for me. If I have, to wear, <laughs> if, if I have to wear the same thing for 15 or more days, it's going to be some fine shoes. And so we made up some really cool boots Jerry, for me. I'm sure I'm asking you what many of your friends have asked you over the years. What are you doing on this mountain? What? Where did this journey for you begin and how did you become a part of this incredible narrative? So I started preparing and climbing in, um, for caring for girls for Kilimanjaro. And I think I was at, how high is Horombo? I, four, seven. I was at about four, four, seven above sea level. The clouds were my carpet. They were oh. just clouds oh. beyond me. And I remember sending one of the last messages that you could to my family saying, I'm doing this again. And when they asked why, I said, I've never felt this close to God. And uh, so having declared openly <laughs> oh. that I was doing it again, I went back the next year and summited again. Um, and then it was that year that we started talking and I said, I need to do the seven summits. I must do the seven summits. Um, so for a period every year, I put the glam Jerry aside and I take whatever. on my... I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> at you, whatever, girl. <laughs> and and I, I, I put on my mountain self and it's a very different per persona and person who goes up that mountain. You guys are part of a community that I think very few of us can, can truly relate to. Can you come mm. back down off that mountain? How do you return? To, to the real world, brother. No, first, first things first. <laughs> Have you come when down you, yet? No, but uh, hold on. <laughs> when you come down the mountain, we often say to people, yeah, those are low altitude problems <laughs> that you have. <laughs> there's, there's your high altitude self and there, there's your low altitude self. Yeah. How, how do you do it? How do you um, it, come down? It's a very tough one because you, you realize immediately as you, as you start making your way out that, oh, now this has ended, so, ended, so what, what, what am I going to do about it? But we all know that at the end of it all, we must come back and do it again. Be, be grounded <laughs> and then plan for the next one. So yeah. that's how, that's how we, we work it out and do it. You just know that you've done one, there's another one. 
And, let's... and mentally you begin to consider what the next one will, will be. be. You already begin to plan yeah. and foresee what the next one will be. That's, that's the frontier of human endeavor. And I think that's what's, what's driven humans to go to space, to go to the depths of the ocean, to go to the, the peaks of mountains, all seven of the highest summits. That's amazing for me to hear because I've known you a long time. <laughs> um, and I've seen where you've come from in this, this empire that you've built. But this is a whole different side, yes. it side is. to life, which is, yeah. is amazing. But it's, it can't be lost on you that people have a record number of people have been dying on Mount Everest now because people want just a piece of that, a slice of that. So when you mm. go about planning your next adventure, how, what do you take into account? What, what is the next adventure? Well, what do you take into account? You take into account all the things that can go wrong, but at the same time you are focusing on the positive side of things because I don't think we can just swim in the shade of people dying on mountains. It, and it is not just Everest as per se. Yeah. Just to make an example, I was reading something this morning that there are still about seven people missing in a mountain in India, a small mountain. But you won't hear about it because it is not that That's much not popularized. Everest, yeah. yeah, that is it. It is that. But what's the next one? My next one is comrades in what, five days? You! What's your next? What is he's, wrong with you? No, he's, he's mad. He's mad. I'm not as mad. He has infected me somewhat. So, so here's what's happening. He's got, uh, uh, he's got comrades. And then for caring for girls, he has to take a group up in July. July and and then, then we come back and then he and I take uh, Tuli Madonsela and a group up to Kilimanjaro for summit in August. August. Yeah. And then he takes on what in September? I'm, I'm going for another big mountain in September. Um, well, hoping that the figures will add up because they aren't um, at the moment. I'm disappointed <laughs> to say I had committed to climb what I still regard as one of my mountains of my heart, which is near Everest, and you saw it. But then I'm sad to say I couldn't commit to that one. But yes, I am going to the Himalayas again in September, going for another 8,000 meter peak because this is just a journey of the greatest ones that I want to attempt yeah, in my life. Yeah, high altitude issues. I know. Um, <laughs> I haven't reached 6'6 six, six yet, um, which is something we're both considering for me for January. Um, happen, it'll yeah. be the oh, highest yeah. peak in South America, uh, Akakangrua. And um, so that's my next endeavor, will be um, just over 6,000 above sea level in January. Well, I hope you can both take on board now. I mean, it's impossible to summate what, what you guys are doing and, and I'm sure what it means to you personally but from the rest of our perspective every time you do this you do raise the bar somewhat um, and hopefully inspire people to think about their lives their world this beautiful planet oh, the of gift of the mm. planet that we have slightly different you have no so idea you. being surrounded by all the peaks of the Himalayas just makes you want to step from one to the other to the next oh Absolutely. man I've no doubt that you will achieve it you can let us know what you think of the absolute frontier of human endeavor achieved by two incredible South Africans. We love you guys. Thank you so much for bringing your, your bedazzled hiking boots as well. Um, but Any most time. importantly, as I say, every time I speak to an adventurer, stay safe. Please, we, we want will. to have you back on we the will. show. You Thank can let you. us know what you thought of this incredible, this list of achievements. Hit us up on our Expresso Morning Show Facebook page.